Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. This meeting of the TAC is being conducted via remote participation. And with that is a call to order for the TAC. Um, any announcements? Can you hear everybody? Oh, thank you, yeah. Yes, we can hear. I can hear you, yeah, yeah. I can hear you all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, everyone can be heard. And and I sent information to um, Eve and uh, Holden. But... Okay. Um, are there any announcements? Um, I had a couple quick announcements. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. One was that last week I participated in interviews for TAC candidates. Yay, it was very exciting. Um, and I think what I heard from the town, and Guilford was there for some of them too. What uh, I heard from the town manager is that he's planning to take the his proposed appointments to the council for approval on February 28th. Um, Great. Thank you. And, um, and one sad note there is that Holden, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying, oh, well, actually, maybe he's here now. Let's see. Holden is here. So here we can elevate him. Holden is now a panelist, I think. Hi, Holden. Hey, Holden. Thank you for coming. How's it going? Good. Um, so, well, now that you're here, I was going to just mention, um, yeah, I mean, you had mentioned at our last meeting, which was only a week ago, that you were going to do the interview for the TAC candidate interviews. And I was going to share the news you had shared, but it's up to you if you want to do that. Yeah, I. so me and my partner are are trying to buy a house, which <laughs> anyone is also in that process. It's not easy. Um, and it's it's looking like uh, Amherst might not be where we end up over the next couple months. So what I told uh, Tracy and Guilford um, and the town manager was I'm I'm ha more than happy to participate, um, you know, as I've been doing and and whatever that means for official capacity or not, but just wanted to put that out that, you know, it's been a <laughs> for, between applying last April and you know now it being February things change, um, so I might not be around for the the full year appointment or two year appointment. Um, well, Holden, did you look at 25 Levert Road? I did not. You should go look at that house and you should really <laughs> think about it hard. Okay. I'm Wait, is this, a, is this a legit thing? But okay. <laughs> All right, then. Okay. Thanks, Gilford. And thank you, Holden, for participating even in an unofficial capacity because you've had a lot to add to our conversations. So. Good luck with your house hunt. Yeah. Good luck with your house hunt. Yeah. yeah. Is. And, we, and we will appreciate you being here as long as you continue to be willing to join us. So thank you. Any other okay. announcements, Tracy? Um, I can't think of any right now. Great. And um, so the next agenda item is public comment, which I assume we don't really have any. Um, and nor the, do we have approval? I did not see minutes, but I didn't see any from minutes. Amber either. Okay. So I think we can hold that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Great. Can... Um, and so the next order of business is um, I think Tracy has some news for us on the TSO um, ref referral to us about the parking permit revisions. Yeah. So I wanted to just um, check in. So as I wrote in my email this morning, I mean, my two top priorities for this meeting um, were one, um, Kim and myself, we had both worked on a memo related to the parking restrictions on the arterial roadways that we would like to forward to TSO and the council at some point with, um, with the tax blessing. Um, and then also I learned sort of secondhand that TSO, TSO in their report to the council, um, they said that they are planning on holding a public hearing on the revisions to the downtown parking 
permit program, the ones that were presented by a few members of the town staff uh, a few weeks ago, the last council, two council meetings ago, and um, and that the TSO is requesting TAC input um, by their next TSO meeting, which is a week from today. So that is one reason I had sent the information on it back to everyone. Um, I'm not sure how much they didn't really, TSO didn't give me any guidance on what we should be commenting on. I mean, there's a few things I definitely think are under the jurisdiction attack that we could comment on. There's some other elements that I personally have expressed concerns about in conversations with counselors and town staff. Um, so I guess the thing is, I feel like that second, that new business item could be a sort of open-ended conversation. And so maybe- well, Do we want to like get- do you want to um, bring that up and just go over what you think, you know, points are that we could help? Because I, I, you know, in reading it over, I'm not sure how much we add to the conversation. Right. I'd be interested in knowing what parts you think. I, I guess, do we want to, yeah, I guess so my question to Kim and the other members of the TAC is if we want to look at the parking restrictions memo first and get that off our plate, or if we want to start with an open-ended conversation about the... Why don't, why don't we do your memo first? We're, we're sure we get that done. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. I was thinking. I like checking things off my list. I feel so accomplished. So, <laughs> okay. And I feel like the some of the parking permit stuff, if people are interested, we could spend a lot of time talking and thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. I already have. Okay. Thanks. So um, I sent it around. I think I sent everybody the memo. Did I? Oh, it's been a long so I only time. have I have the version with the marked up version. Is that what you sent? Oh, out? I did send. I'm sorry. Did I not send it to everybody? I apologize. It's a pretty quick memo, so I think even yeah. So that's a good now, we could just literally right, go right, over. right. All right, I can just share that right now. I apologize if I messed that up. Okay. Um, let me just share my screen. I'll pull it up. Do you want? I I was just wondering if you wanted me if you wanted to kind of do the 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 send it to me and then i'll share it and oh, i'll okay. type that's and fine. you um you critique that's, how about that that's fine too <laughs> okay um let me do that i think i meant it to send it when i sent the other stuff all right so but my guess is everyone would benefit from having it on their own screen too. I'm just having a copy. Yeah. On me. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Here, it's, I'm sending it right now. So I had sent um, Kim because Kim had sent me her draft and then I sent her back a version with track changes, but then I just wanted to share like a clean version with everybody. So I meant to send it earlier, but I just sent it to everyone now. So hopefully Kim yeah. will receive it in a minute. Um, Kim. Here, I'm gonna um, share my screen, okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so this, we had talked about this um, memo at the last meeting and I appreciate him writing up a draft. Um, so what we, what we had wanted to do with it is just to circle back on the original memo that Guilford had sent to the town manager and the TSO. Um, you know, he'd sent a memo about trying to create a consistent policy with regards to when you make decisions for on 
street parking and using three criteria, including um, the road classification, roadway widths, and traffic volumes. Um, it did seem that TSO in their own guidelines that they adopted most of the language and the recommendations in Guilford's original memo, which was great. Um, the one piece that they left out is some of the things that were in the next steps. And we looked at that at the last meeting. You know, the next steps, including things about restricting parking on the arterials. And there's also some elements there about like related to sight line, restricting parking or sight lines and some other things. Um, so this is just one piece of it. It just seemed good, I think, to push it forward. So that's why we were proposing to do so. So as I write in this third paragraph down, it says the last section of that March memo suggests that should it be decided to proceed with using these three criteria, the following next steps are recommended, right? So one of the next steps was about the arterials. Um, and so as Kim said, the memo short, what, what I did is just describe, I used the language that was in Guilford's memo as well as in the TSO's criteria about defining arterial roadways. And then I just summarized from the list that Guilford had provided earlier that there's 11 roads that are classified as principal arterials and what they are. And there's 14 roadways that are minor arterials. At our meeting last week, we talked about that we could, we, uh, get, we also shared the list of the connector streets at that meeting, but then, I mean, those include some more neighborhood streets. So we thought that as a start, maybe just to restrict the parking on arterials for the principal arterials and the minor arterials. And on that second page, I just reiterate that, you know, the DPW recommended that the parking be restricted and we agree with that. And I explain why, you know, that such a restriction is essential to prevent vehicles from parking in bike lanes or on the paved shoulders of roadways where pedestrians could be walking, you know, if they're limited or no sidewalks and parking in the roadway on these busy and sometimes narrow streets can restrict sight lines and also for pedestrians. So the language could be a little bit cleaner if people have suggestions, but, um, and I said, I just closed with ideas about locations where parking can continue to be allowed, include areas in and around village centers and other areas with business or other uses where there's a, a safe spaces for parking. These locations, and this was from the language that Guilford had mentioned, these locations yeah. would need to specifically be marked so that no, the no parking rule elsewhere along these are, would be enforceable and ticketable. That was my understanding from you, Guilford, that the Amherst police wouldn't ticket if it's not very clear, so. Is that right, Guilford? Because that's kind of what I got too. He just nodded and- Okay, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They, so. won't, they won't take it unless it's clear. Yeah. You should say, for the record, you nodded. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do people have comments, concerns? I mean, one question I had as I was writing this up, you know, working from what Kim had sent is just, we can submit this to TSO, you know, or would it circulate to the town manager first and then come back to TSO, like how that would proceed. I also was a little bit sensitive. I noticed when TSO wrote up their minutes about it. I mean, there had been some former members of the TSO that were really concerned that TAC or staff were trying to tell TSO and the council what to do on public ways. And so I wanted to make it clear that these are just recommendations that nothing is actually being proposed and it's up to the council to do as they wish and so. Do we wanna, I, I wonder um, in reading this and and just in along with, you know, kind of the thought that we're not really stepping on anyone's toes. Um, if we wanna add where, I mean, there currently isn't parking on, on these streets. These are major streets and they're, I mean, there no, there's no one who regularly parks on these things, as far as I can tell, except in places where, where you know, there are actually parking spots. There are maybe we could say something like they're currently, um, I because people don't park there on any but, of these streets, really. 
I but, mean, normally. But, but I think that right. I mean, Gilbert might be, be able to speak more to this, but it seems that the issue is that, yes, I do think that on these streets that people mainly park in the village areas, like, for example, like Main Street is on the list or North and right. South Pleasant Street, and they're mainly parking, you know, where people should be parking, but then there's always some people who park elsewhere. That's what I, I, so, I, I mean, I, I just wonder if we went, might want to make it clear that currently the usage is, is mainly confined to marked parking areas or something like that. I mean, Guilford, we can't hear you, but is that your experience? It's actually South Pleasant and East Pleasant are the two that actually have parking that happens on them. Okay. Uh, a few on Bay Road every once in a while. Um, and, the, and the rest are pretty much, yeah, it's only where there's parking spaces available. Well, then maybe we shouldn't say that, but. I mean, we could, as Kim, I mean, Kim suggested adding a sentence or two. I mean, we could call out that you know, the majority of these streets are not having people park already. But there are, you know, there have been some issues when people do. Right. I, otherwise, it's fine not to, not to add that in. I just thought it might make it more clear that we're just kind of um, solidifying something that's not explicitly stated, but um, effectively true. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I like, I mean, I like that idea. How do other TAC members feel and hold on? Any other comments? I'm just looking at the. No, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering if we should um, simply send this to the uh, TSO with a copy to Paul and Guilford rather than to the entire council. Oh, yeah. I mean, if the TSO. That's true. Is that we're, um, you know, and we really want to just honor the protocol. So, just, so, well, I think that's true, right? I mean, I guess one thing is, should we, as a courtesy, then CC the council president? So your, your charter says you are a town manager committee. So we should send it just to the town manager and then he forwards it to the TSO? I think that might be better. Okay. So. To... But the TSO did ask for, did the TSO ask for our opinion on this? No. No. I mean, they had early on in the process, like when Guilford came out with it to his mm -hmm. original memo. Okay, well, in the absence of the TSO saying, please look at this, I, I think it's Guilford's suggestion that we just send this to the town manager. Uh, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. So I, guess, so I guess we could say... Well, actually, actually I just checked. You're actually a select, select board has authority <laughs> over you. Uh, that hasn't changed. <laughs> Sorry. So I, would, I don't. I, don't I would recommend well. going to the town manager since it wasn't directly asked to you, and then he can send it to the council okay. president mm -hmm. who can decide what to do next. Yeah, I don't think the select board would bother reading this at this point. No, I mean it's not a priority item, but it could go. Yeah, and I mean I don't feel like. I didn't attend all of the council meetings when the stuff was being discussed, but when I looked back, it seemed like TSO, they took Guilford's memo and they made their criteria and then they used the criteria a number of times. And when the parking items were being reviewed at the council meetings, they said, here was our criteria, but at no point did the council like adopt the criteria themselves, which is why I continued to refer to TSO. And I think one issue with the council, the TSO's criteria is that there had been another policy, there had been this 
guide, these guidelines, but then there had also been another policy that TSO created, which also had to do with public way requests. And so it was one of the carryover items that TSO mentions for the new council about reconciling the two different guidance documents. Hmm. And so perhaps that's why that didn't go to the council. So, yeah, I mean, we could do it that way. I mean, I mean, so Gilford, are you suggesting, I mean, we would wanna add just like a you know, an, an intro sentence or something. And just, I mean, this, this did originally come to tack back with your March 2021 memo, like you shared with us that memo too. And so, um, I mean, we, no, we could just I, say I, we could just say that we're like circling back from that. Memo. I was. I don't think you need. I think it, he'll understand yeah. exactly what you're doing here. Okay. Great. So, do we want to? If there are no further um, changes, um, do we need to approve this as a committee? Sure. I will so move. So, so okay. Kim, do we want to then add just one sentence about that this that we're just codifying like current practices because the majority of these streets do not currently have people parking on them? I I think that that would help the TSO. Sure. But, okay. Uh, maybe. I, I guess I would put it. I would put it towards the bottom. I think. Um, I mean, we're saying, you know, that we recommend it. So like you could even put it um, yeah. after that location sentence, right? Parking where parking could continue to be allowed. I mean, I would put it like three, three paragraphs down. Like I would leave this about restricting locations and we could also just say at the, on the last page, on the second page. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And then after the ticketable part, we could just say, um, you know, currently, currently only a few of the, or the DPW, you know, reports that currently only a few of the arterial streets, you know, have, have had any issues with people parking on, in, on, more, you know, on, on areas that aren't specifically designated for streets. With un, undesignated. Like, or you can, you know, have issues with um, on street parking in areas that are not designated. Areas. You know, have issues with areas. Have issues with areas. Areas with have. No, with areas um, where parking has not been. not designated we're, we're uh, what do we want to say people that's <laughs> dpw reports that only a few i, I, I think you just leave it out no yeah. just not have it okay okay yeah. no that's, really yeah it, 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 does, it doesn't it doesn't add okay. anything really all so, right um all right that's fine okay so then um we so this has been so moved. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor of the memo and the current um, and its current form being sent to the Amherst Town Manager um, by hand. Let's see a hand raise. Everybody. Thank you. So that's you. Okay. Thank you. Right. And so, um, Tracy, I'll send this to you. Um, the edited version and. Um, okay. Okay. And we'll transmit it to the town manager. Sounds good. I will stop sharing. So Guilford, I mean, just sort of so in, you know, as a next step. So do you think that the um, town manager would then just share it with the council president 
right? Is that what you were suggesting? And then the council president could send it back to TSO. Yes. Okay. And that what happened with the crosswalk guidelines? Will that be the same procedure then? Yes. Okay, great. So hopefully they'll come back to us at some point. <laughs> yes. Excellent, thank you. Um, so do we want to take up the um, parking and start looking at the sure. parking memo? Yeah. Um, so, and thank you, Bernie, for sending out the correct memo. I sent out the wrong memo. Um, so, Kim, do you want to pull up that memo too? Sure. I'm, I'm just sending, I'm just following up on sending you this. Okay, got it. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, and I, you know, all I have is the, um, it has a lot of correct, you know, correct, correction. No, so there's actually an original cover memo. So Bernie sent it around. Because oh, I, did I, I get them. that? I don't, maybe and, I did. And I, I, I sent it out and sent it out late in the day. So you may not have, you may not have seen it. I, right. I have a copy because the finance committee will be taking this up. Right. Next week. Oh, you know, I have it, but it, uh, oh yeah, I have that. Okay. So I can um, share with you, share screen and this town memo. Yes. Sorry. Okay. There we go. This is this, this is it. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. So I did ask the um, I did ask the TSO for a little bit of guidance. I mean, I saw in their report to the town council that they expect some TAC feedback, though they hadn't they hadn't contacted the TAC and said, "Hey, we want feedback on the following." Um, so I had just been thinking about the parking permit changes already, mm -hmm. um, and the ones. So I think the I mean, I think we can look over this memo as a group. It seemed like we'd mainly be interested in some of the detailed changes. Um, right. I mean, so just to recap, I don't know how long, oh, this memo is four pages, right? So what the council, what the, the town staff who worked on the memo, there is a um, town staff, like, like parking leadership group or something, which includes the finance director, Sean Mangano, um, the town manager, Paul Bachelman, and then Jennifer LaFontaine, which is who is does some of the financial side of it. Um, so they're initially responding to, in this memo, they're initially responding to a CRC memo that asked them to implement the following recommendations. Um, so in this page that Kim is scrolling to here about the permit price. So one big part of this, um, of the town's proposal has to do with changing the, the fee structure for the um, parking, um, for the parking permits, because currently they are $25 for a whole year, um, which is very low. And I think as you see, like under the, that first table at the top, it says for comparison, Northampton charges 45, dollars per month for its outdoor, outdor long-term dots and $90 per month for the garage. Um, and they also are interested in structuring it to be um, where vehicles that are not registered in Amherst, like registered garage, considered to be garage in Amherst, and that then Amherst is not receiving the excise tax from those vehicles that they would pay a higher rate which would either encourage them to then change their vehicle registrations over to Amherst and Amherst would receive that money and then they would have a lower parking fee rate or, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know how much of a difference it's gonna make to those people in terms of the total cost for them, but maybe there's some savings and they would be encouraged to then garage their vehicles in Amherst. Officially. Either way, it would increase. It does seem it, like- It would increase the revenue. For I sure. mean, it does seem the $25 parking fee is certainly inexpensive, uh -huh. yes. at least. 
So Holden, do you have Holden. a comment? Yeah, um, Tracy, did you just say, so is that $25 that's annually? Yes, yeah. correct. Okay, I guess, mm -hmm. could it, um, for the table right above where it says for comparison, could that uh, specify that all those amounts are annual right at the top of it? Oh, sorry. I think, uh, no, Kim, I think if you go back to that page, I see what, yeah. right. Um, so when it says like fee 25, Right, right. I see what you're saying. Okay. So that's I, a good idea. I kind of thought that was monthly just based on. <laughs> ah, no, it makes sense. Right. I mean, that would be a normal, normal sort of value, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess, I guess down be, uh, even that's cheap. Yeah. Right. Um, I, actually, I think it is monthly. If you read the next paragraph below, it says for comparison, Northampton charges $45 per month. It's no, these not are, no, these are these it's proposed cost. fees are the annual fees because look, yeah. they have the non Amherst vehicle register the registration fee, and you see that they're going to be increasing that to four hundred dollars by yeah. FY twenty twenty five. So that's not monthly, right? So Silver, that's exactly in. what why I was confused. <laughs> yeah, because we had we had a parking Actually. permit a couple of years ago, a residential one. It was twenty five dollars for the whole year. Yeah, that's insane. That is yeah. absolutely insane it's bonkers well, and mark doesn't is, pay for anything it doesn't no. even pay for the lining of the the spaces marcus it actually used to be less expensive it used to be when i first moved i think it was like 15 dollars or 10 dollars for yeah. a whole year it's ridiculous <laughs> yeah so so the fees are not really, I mean, that's not, I mean, I assume they're not asking us for that information. No, we shouldn't be setting. Right. I, I mean, I will say one thing, it, it is worth noting. I mean, if you just go back to fees, Kim, um, there was one thing that I had, I had wondered about is there's this reserve spot um, fee. So those are the reserve spaces on the lower level of the Boltwood garage. And there's actually 28 of them, not 20 of them. And I got clarification on that from the parking team. So. It, it might be more helpful actually to say that Northampton charges whatever four to $500, whatever that ends up right, being no, per year. Right, no, absolutely. Because even, even if you say annually at the top, I think it still is a weird comparison, you know, you're kind of comparing mm -hmm. right, right, right. types of fees. And one thing interesting, so one part of the proposal is to change the permit, um, the regular permits from um, being nine effective as well as the parking permit restrictions on the different areas. They're currently um, in effect from September to May when the colleges are in session, basically the nine months that the colleges are in session and they are not in effect. Oh, really? Um, June, That's July and August because the demand is just so much less. Um, so one of the proposals is to make the parking permit to be 12 months of a year and then start it on July 1st. Um, this isn't necessarily, as Marcus said, like under the purview of the TAC per se, but I did express some concern about that, that if you were going to make it 12 months, that it should be um, aligned with when leases are for a lot of rentals and as well as the UMass parking permit fees, which those parking permits start in September, like September 1st. How much does the UMass charge? Uh, just out of interest. Well, UMass typically a lot of the lots they charge. Wait, Marcus, you don't drive to campus. You know, they typically <laughs> charge um, between three hundred to four hundred dollars a year. I have, is that it? Oh wow! Yes, it's also a sliding wow. scale fee. I mean, it but it's so cheap as a get up. I remember like Georgia Tech used to be like fifteen hundred bucks, and that was like what? Oh yeah, uh, that was. Yeah, but you're I think downtown Atlanta. Well, I know. I know. Versus I mean... <laughs> but that and that was like that was a long time ago. They I have remember. a sliding scale for employees at oh, UMass. Well. And you can also you can also um have 
I mean, one thing my family used to do is you can get, and they really could advertise this a lot more, is you can get um, carpool passes. Um, like if you're typically only having one vehicle oh, cool. and then you, what happens is you register both vehicles and everybody pays a reduced rate and then you get a certain number of visitor passes. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's what I do. Yeah. Cause I mainly bike in and I'm my husband and I share a, a commuter parking, but they don't spot. really, um, they don't really advertise that program yeah. so much. No, so. they don't at all. And they used to have com commuter parking spots. Yes. Oh, do they not have them anymore? Oh. Well, not in my lot anyway. I think what happened, the snowplow knocked down my commuter parking <laughs> signs and they never replaced them. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, sorry. That's the sides. Yes. Um, okay. So they want to increase the fees. So that's all part of recommendation. That all makes sense. Yeah. And then, you know, they want to have the new signage to clearly identify the lots and the hours and things. Um, they want to update the website they've already been working on the communication um and because so. it's because because the weird thing is the memo that i saw had a lot more kind of information that i thought was relevant including um the you know what where the parking was and well right so kim those are actually in the regulations Oh, so uh -oh. the memo, this is the cover memo that they sent. And then they also shared some of the markup of the, the oh, regulations. So Kim, if you want to close the memo, we could open the regulations. Yeah. With the markup. Do you have a copy of that too? Yeah, I do have that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought we were going to look at. So it's just in my folder, which I have to locate. Uh, too much things open on my desktop as usual. Um, where is it? If I just pause, oh, oh there it is. Okay. <clears throat> Amherst Park. Nope. I guess I don't have it here. Sorry. All right. I will send have it. it in your email from today, Tracy. Yeah, it's a link. I have a link to the town version. Memo from uh, this. Yes. And uh, sorry, let's share my screen. There we go. This. Yeah. Yes. Sure. So that's where the park, the year thing um, is here. Right, right, the permit year. So, and I don't know, I mean, I don't know. So one thing, I mean, I'm not sure how much this is. I mean, because we didn't receive any guidance from TSO, I'm not sure how, you know, how involved we would be with where permits, when the permit year starts or whatever. Yeah, no, 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 right. But, so but, it's um, not, you, July, but, July 1 to June 30th lines it up with the town's fiscal year. Oh, there we go. But wouldn't it be problematic? So, Bernie, I mean, so if the fact that so many leases um, start in August, like mid-August or September, as well as the UMAC parking system, which, you know, as we were just saying, isn't that cheap. So if uh, somebody is moving over the summer, but they were going to be in Amherst for June and July, or June, you know, would they, would they need to... Um, like pay for two permits or how would that work or well you 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 get the permit for the year if you're moving in in September you buy the permit in September and it, and it runs through um oh right okay June 30th uh you're you're but if you were say you still had I mean the, the, the issue would be is if you um uh do you discount the permit if somebody uses it for less than a year I mean, so far that hasn't been the practice, but it hasn't been an right. issue because the permits were $25, but if they're going to be mm -hmm. in the hundreds of dollars, it could be more of an issue. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and one thing that came up just um, as an equity issue too, and one of the discussions I heard was that now that the pricing would be higher, like, are there ways to get a waiver or are there exemptions, you know, based on income or other economic factors so that people don't I mean but that's not for us to decide right no but, of course yeah. not right now yeah. it's just um 
so so it's it I think it is interesting to look at who I, I had no idea about the types of permits I, I you know I had heard us talking about employer permits but I didn't actually understand what that meant and so that's people who work downtown have are a, are qualified to get permits that's what that looks like yes and renters and, oh, and, okay. oh and there's visitors you can also have visitor permits right which so I so I do have a question about this eligibility, like under section three about and I mean, maybe can we want to review the list? <laughs> I don't like, know where they are. I want to know why my street is mentioned here. Um, no, so. Wait, oh, no, no. So what happened was, Kim, so so this is what I was asking you about. So there are two. We can actually pull up. There are two specially designated residential. I'm just trying to get here. Areas. This is what you want, right? Right. I mean, that should. So is that? Did you scroll down to get to that, or scroll up? Yes. Because you almost want to have. Wouldn't you want to introduce that, like towards the beginning, so that people know what everybody's talking about? <laughs> okay. So um, there's area one. Residential. Yeah. So there's this area one. So the way these residential only per parking permits, my understanding of them work is that there's this Allen Street and Nutting Avenue. I Wait, looked I, at that. I was going to just, oh, how about if right. I, I share yeah. that? Can you That's guys right. see that? Yeah, yep, we sure can. So I looked at the Allen Street and Nutting today um and the adjoining street is phillips and it's basically mainly fraternities and right. large rental housing that's um yeah. those did seem to be those residential only permits did seem to be used a lot i believe i mean i don't know how but there far, isn't sufficient parking back there yeah but there must be with all those i mean all of those fraternities and stuff they all have parking lots do you know so yeah um i wasn't you know, I wasn't sure how old any of these date and somebody told me that that area didn't used to be quite so rental student rental housing oriented. And so it's possible that some of these this residential only permit dates back to when it wasn't. Um, Which is and, correct. It's correct because when this was made was in this was made in 90, 97, 98. So and, and Half those houses were um, owner occupied. Oh, more than half. So it, I imagine it's also parking for people on this street up, you know, whatever the street is here too, above so, nutting. No one, yeah. So one thing, um, so that's Phillips Street, and there's no parking allowed on Phillips. It has right, like right. Toes, it's all tow oh. zones, and Phillips right comes back out to North Pleasant. Um, so, and then there's this residential only permit area two, which includes this section of McClellan Street. Now, I had heard from, and what's interesting about this, and that's why you saw that special language for Cosby, Kim, is that, so there's this section on McClellan where, um, this orange section where it says that it's this residential only permit area yeah. two. And that in order to qualify that, you either have to live on the section of McClellan Street or oh, on Cosby. Okay. And then, yeah, it's it's and then there's a yellow it's permit. There's a yellow, which is just yeah. a standard downtown par town parking right. permit. Now, when I visited today, I mean, this is just a snapshot in time. I was just trying to understand this a little bit more. But um, nobody was using, nobody was parked on McClellan in the resident only parking no. permit. And um, and I don't know how much they get used. Um, and then they if you don't. went to the if you get if you went to that yellow area, they were right. all used. Now the right. other thing is that on the stretch of McClellan, as well as on Beston and Page and Cosby, like almost every property does have a driveway, and so the majority of cars are parked on the driveways. Some of the driveways though are pretty small, like where they can only hold like maybe one or two cars. So. Um, one thing that I had heard from somebody who lives on Page, and this had been an issue with them for a while, is because Page is not mentioned as a street with permit parking, if they had visitors, they have a small driveway, and if they had visitors and wanted them yeah, to be able to, to park, they had, they said they actually 
had to go all the way they had to go park at kendrick park no that's not true though that maybe they're all these maybe all these part these spaces were taken but i agree that doesn't make sense because there's all most of the most of the there's no parking on it on cosby or page or Beston, and so if you do have visitors you do need another place to park but now you can park like on your side of the street on cosby like after 3 p.m right right we got that we got that changed so that no, i understand our, our yeah. babysitter could park there in the afternoon <laughs> that's why we got so it. no so i guess so that would be one this sounds like a lot of little nitty gritties but i mean is that something that we would want to maybe recommend that one if you keep residential only permit area i mean if you keep that area that it could also include page and best it should it doesn't make sense why it doesn't well best in does have this right but but yeah. no but see that what's what the thing is that because those streets if you look at the language it says the only streets that are considered in the town center parking permit area shall be limited oh are within the general business district or budding I, know, I, I guess I'd have to see what the zoning districts are or have frontage or principal access. But I agree. It's very strange that there are these little pockets of resident only right. parking. The little pockets are there to keep students from parking. Yeah. I mean, we definitely, if the problem is if, if this didn't exist, if this little red play part didn't exist there would be all kinds of parking on it all the time so but uh, but you were saying that those don't get used that much that no they don't but but it also it that street shouldn't have park wall-to-wall -wall parking on it because you can't it, it it makes it into a one lane street no okay it's only like occasionally used parking really okay so it wouldn't make sense to change that over to yellow. You're saying it no, makes sense to not. Okay. No. I mean, there's actually, so some people had mentioned to me on Lincoln, you know, there's an issue um, where like, say somebody lives on Lincoln North of McClellan. So on Lincoln North yeah. McClellan, there's no parking allowed. Right. Then again, like if they had visitors and wanted to have a visitor permit, so there's no place unless they are considered to be qualified there's no place for their visitors to park except for like all the way back again well it would have to be behind park. here right here no but that's but those are all restricted still um oh actually no they're not restricted they're right? not no I'm it's it's just that. restricted on this right side. okay sorry it yeah so Okay, so that can be one minor recommendation we make. Um, Kim, can you go back to like the bylaws? Oh, I'm sorry, yep. No, that's fine. I mean, okay. did anybody, I mean, I, I had gone through this a little bit. I mean, did anybody else read through it and have any like big things that stuck out to them that they'd wanna see changed or? So I guess I to me, the, the thing that would make, make the most sense for us to give our input on would be um where parking is currently permitted yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah. and i did have just before we get to that part i do have i did have one question and that again that was related to the visitor passes is so it says here you know use of visitor passes that elderly or disabled residents eligible for permits um you know, we're able to park and to get visitor passes. But then again, the person on page who had expressed concerns about it said that they were told that that was only that I'd be curious about how elderly is defined, actually, because they were told that the person had to be like 80 or over to qualify. So I don't know if, if elderly is defined anywhere in the bylaws. Wouldn't it be 65? It, it is. It elderly is not defined in the bylaws, Bernie. Well, no, there's no, no, there's no definition, and it's yeah. elderly is like one of those, you, you know, somebody who's oh. in the, that demographic. I can tell you that uh, <laughs> it it depends on perspective and 
No, I under. I mean, I understand what elderly is, yeah, but I if it's going to say, license, that's about but, it. But if the person, um, I mean, if people are going to be told, oh, you can only qualify for an elderly. I think that know, that's a it's a valid concern. If you want to use the uh, term elderly, then you should define have it a definition being, of what it is, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, persons of of what age and over. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. If I even older. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then. Yeah, so Kim, if you want to go back, you know, and this is all the verification. I was just reading the visitor, the visitor pass thing. So the visitor pass thing, one thing I thought was really interesting is that so people who live in these permit areas are eligible to get up to 60 passes per year for visitors, including you get you're allowed to have 30 that are free initially. Um, and then you can also get an additional 30 that only cost a dollar. <laughs> um, and but what uh, Jennifer LaFontaine, what she said during her presentation is that um, I think that typically only like 30 households request them. Yeah. And so maybe that's something that people don't know about the visitor pass. And it also just seems Again, I'm not sure the fees are our purview at all, but it seems really super inexpensive <laughs> that you can, for like a dollar, you can have people park there. <laughs> so, anyway. I think, you know, most people have, I mean, I, I, I've i purchased a few of those, but, are, 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 or we've gotten a few of them, but because it's not a problem on nights and weekends, when you have right. this, it doesn't really matter. That's okay. Right. I mean, like, when would you actually need it? Need it? When are the police going to actually care about it? Anytime you UMass is in session, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. But but I was actually thinking. I mean, with it priced so cheaply, like if UMass did, you know, if UMass students wanted, and they were, I mean, maybe they're not aware of the visitor program either, but they could. You know, they could qualify for up to like 60 passes well, you have, pretty expensively yeah. and it would, it seems like you, they could really leverage their parking the money pretty well, you know, yeah. so. Well, you're not allowed to resell them. And you, you have you're to be allowed to, but that doesn't mean you can't. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I don't think the town has that many parking enforcement officers when you have all these complicated yeah. parking. Two things to actually oh is that yeah. right there are only two is it is it just two i'm under the impression it's only two but right in there, two. go ahead i'm sorry go for it. oh sorry it's two and a half a two and a half but we have some pretty complicated <laughs> parking to get that much enforcement i just uh, so. is, is there a, guil a guillotine in the town where there's how you get the half person or no. uh, they have a part-timer uh okay, okay. Yeah. So, so Kim, to your point about the, um, you know, where the streets that are included, um, the list, the current list is the same as is in the current bylaw, and um, I think I brought this up at the last meeting, but the North Pleasant McClellan to Triangle, right? They did keep it like on the west side only, which is something, of course, we want to have removed because oh, right. we had decided we had we had recommended and the council agreed that North Pleasant Street should be um, east side only. So yeah, so that's something and that, that and there's do. also there's also language, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but there's also language that says it only applies for like parallel parking and not angled parking. Um, so I think that that should be something that the town should that should be. Oh, yeah, expanded to. Okay, that's a good point. And so, um, so do you think we should make those suggestions to someone? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna write up something. I mean, the the TSO had asked for our feedback, so I was gonna give like these kind of minor points, like the yeah. elderly and things like that, unless we thought that there was anything more major. So, yeah. um, oh, what about that little? street that we just um restricted parking on that's off of um route nine hendrick place the new that street that tiny street yeah kendrick place oh, okay is that on here no it isn't i mean it could okay be added or something 
No, that's fine. I mean, I don't, do people need permits to park on that? No, I mean, that's one reason yeah. that the street okay. is so crowded is because people don't need permits. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you do need permits to park on, you know, North Prospect and South Prospect and, um, you know, a lot of the other streets around the area. Um, are there, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just wondering if they, if all of these, we, except for that one, um, if there are any others of these that um, parking on the side indicated here is a problem. I mean, that's the current practice. Okay, all of these. I don't know. Current. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know, Guilford, do you know of any others with issues? And I haven't, I don't drive on all these streets that much, I guess. I mean, I did have some, you know, just thinking about Spring Street, like Spring Street to the east of the common, like once the new housing goes oh, on Spring right. Street and that they are not going to be providing any um, off off street parking um, on site. So that seems like that could like, you know, create some parking demand pressures around Spring Street. Um, and then I also thought it could actually impact too. So the Spring Street parking lot currently, um, it's considered to be one of those more peripheral lots, the Spring Street parking lot that goes between North Pleasant Street and Boltwood, um, where the it charges, it's just like 50 cents an hour and it ends at 6 p.m. Oh, look at you, you're good. Yeah. So yeah, the Spring Street lot here between Boltwood and oh, North that? Pleasant. Yeah, so okay. this is considered, these brown ones are considered peripheral lots. And oh, so the, yeah, okay. the, these brown ones have, they all end at 6 p.m. and not 8 p.m. as the green ones end at 8 p.m. And oh. they are 50 cents an hour and not a dollar. Oh, so this isn't specifically about the parking permit program, but I guess to me, the Spring Street lot could have a lot of demand. So, yeah. And if people can't park in the main street lot when it disappears, like I think that that would increase the demand for the oh, spring yeah. street lot too. Yeah. Oh, and there's a charging station back there. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, and there's and there's some charging stations on the lower level of the garage too. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, I have a question for you about that. Uh, do we? So it's unclear if you're at the charging stations if you need to pay for parking or if you're paying for parking by paying the meter uh, i mean by paying the you know the charge so it's kind of weird but anyway I don't know. i'm under the impression because i heard somebody complaining about this the other day that at the town lots you're supposed to be paying both for the charging and for the parking space yeah that's what it seems like it seems that like but at yeah. other locations uh, you know that aren't town of Amherst municipal parking that's not the case right yeah yeah so. exactly yeah hmm. yep yeah, the electrical, the electrical cars are just freeloaders anyhow so they just want it free <laughs> <laughs> yes all right so is that I'm, I'm kind of curious like when when you know we we as a town potentially build a performance venue you know on the town common would the town be seeking arrangements with like say amherst college for parking on their lots like on spring street or at converse um during the summer i mean i know technically you can park after hours on college lots for free, but I mean, would there be a more, would they be more willing to make that widely known? The, the town, the town is talking to Amherst College about things like that all the time. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so one of the, one of the things I heard from um, a TSO member and you know, and asking the TAC for feedback was 
that they wanted because, you know, as we stressed in some of our other conversations, that the TAC is thinking about things on like a system level. You know, if we had any sort of like, you know, more system, like comprehensive transportation type comments about what's proposed with the parking or if we, you know, think it's all, I mean, we have some minor comments, like I've written them down and I can write them yeah. up. Um, I mean, do people, as you people look this over, do you have any kind of larger concerns or? I don't. No, I don't either. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was an easy job. <laughs> So, stop sharing. Um, okay. So, so um, what is so so? Um, I think with those few comments, we can and um, you know, give our suggestions to mm -hmm. the um, TSO <coughs> on those matters that we can we have. So, those on. so, I mean, do we have a perspective about? You know, just in terms of right, because we're looking at transportation and, you know, like making transportation friendly for visitors and residents and everybody. Um, so if the permit program was to change, you know, from being only during the school year to being over the summer too, you know, do we think that that's an issue? I mean, do we want to comment on that or not? What do you guys think? So, I, I think, good with me. Yeah, I, I, I think there are no, there's no problems with parking when there are no students around. Well, so, I mean, I guess that's the thing, right? Is it seems like, like think about Kendrick Park, for example, like if they, like, cause we've noticed before, you know, even we were asked last summer to evaluate the parking near Kendrick Park and that until the students came back, nobody was parking in those spaces. Right. The ones that you're concerned about kim on the west side right, right? and then the yeah. minute the students came back like all, all the spaces are used yes and so i mean in some you know in some ways as like an access issue if um i mean and and i'm i mean i don't live right downtown but it seems that a lot of the other parking the permitted parking is underutilized too you know particularly when the students aren't around so you know, in terms of access, in terms of making it easy for people to come downtown and go to the places they want to go to, is it, I mean, is it a, I mean, is it a good idea for those to all be off, all those spaces to be off limits, like when there's not that much demand? But they're I mean, also, people have I mean, to park further away or whatever, but. But also it, parking is not in in the permanent spots isn't an issue when people are trying to get on the weekends and no of course yeah that's true in the evenings you know and it stops at 5 p.m right so it, it stops even earlier than 6 p.m right which is when the meters stop so and, and holidays so and holidays I don't yeah, know, yeah. That's true. okay okay <clears throat> do we have um uh do we want to is so are you talking the the other business continuing business we had here i mean i guess it would be reasonable to stop now as well but um the draft memo from the TAC to the tso and council is that right what, what is that about it's about our that was charter. the one that we had talked about yeah the charter the charge and things okay, like that about our charge. yeah, yeah. Which I do think we need to work on at some. Point. No, for sure. Um, and I had I had been drafting it, but then I was caught up with the other drafting. Um, yeah. So, and just in terms of just wrapping up here with the parking permit regs. Um, so, I mean, the things we identified is the area two stuff and defining elderly and fixing the North Pleasant. So we didn't have any other specific comments. I guess. No. Um, okay. All right. I mean, do we want? Oh wait, to... no, no, no. You want it? We wanted to add the angled parking. Oh yeah, oh, angled parking. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, I mean, I can write that up, and Great. then thank you. And then, so, do we want to just take a vote that 
um, because I guess what we would do is we would just share it with TSO by next week. Oh, so, right. I mean, okay. I can I can write it up and Kim can read it over and we could like circulate it for any changes mm -hmm. or anything. I mean, it's it's a pretty straightforward memo. We're not talking about big, deep things. Um, but do we want to take a vote that we'll just the, those are our only kind of comments? I think somebody needs to make a motion. Yeah. OK. OK, so I'll craft a motion that um, in our feedback to in our feedback to TSO on the proposed parking permit parking regulation changes that we would recommend that area two be extended, um, that elderly be defined, that um, angled parking be included as allowed permit parking, and that it be corrected the the permitted parking on North Pleasant Street. It be corrected for McClellan to try and like to make it clear that um, it's no longer allowed on the west side. Right. I um I uh, second that motion. So. And actually, I guess so. Just sorry with North Pleasant. Um, so when we had talked about it originally, we did. You, Kim, you had pointed out that there's like a couple houses there, at least one, right? That they don't have that much off-street parking. We had proposed that a few of those spaces on the park side, like be left for um, permit, permit parking yeah. if needed or something. So I think so. We would roll our North Pleasant Street recommendation into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense, okay. everybody. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Kim second it. I so. second and all those in favor. <clears throat> okay. Un unanimous. Great. Unanimous. Great. Okay. So and 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 you will um write that up. I'll yeah, I'll write it up. It will be like a and, one page thing. And then we'll send it to everybody. Oh, and Chris is here. Chris Bressup. Welcome, Chris. Hi, Chris. We're almost done. Yeah. She was Hi. there before. Hi. Hi. I've been here for a while since about yeah. six. Okay. I had to drive my daughter to a doctor's appointment, so I've been listening. I've been a oh, stealth okay. member. All right. <laughs> Did you have anything you wanted to share with us or anything? Not really. I actually belong to the internal parking group. Ah, okay, I sure. So I see the things that Sean proposes and, you know, before they um, hit the public. Okay. So I've got my me mechanism for putting, for having input. So thank you very much. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Oh, I mean, I just, if you had any other kind of updates you wanted to share with TAC or anything. Um, I don't think so at this okay. time, but thanks for asking. So I, I do have a quick question for you. Um, some people have asked me about, or I keep people to quote, help me. They keep forwarding me <laughs> information um, about uh, shared streets and spaces grants, like the current round. So is, um, is the town going to be applying for those funds? Do you think it's likely or? So we no. have um, applied for three rounds. Yes, okay. And we're still finishing the work on um, round two and round three. Or, yes. Yeah. So we're okay. a little reluctant to sign up for round four given that okay. we're still catching up. But okay. I understand that round five will be coming along. So I think <laughs> okay. you know, once round five is revealed, you know, we'll uh -huh. be able to go for that. But for okay. now, I think, you know, we're not, we plan right. to go for round four. Okay. No, I mean, I just people are like, hey, make sure. And I was like, okay, I'm sure the town is on it. I just, you know, so, okay. We know Thank you. About it. That's right. No, careful. of course. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work we, um, no, of course. That ourselves. makes sense. Put okay. Guilty, right? <laughs> All right. Um, great. Okay. So uh, I think we covered the main items on the agenda. Um, are there? Yeah. I mean, if we had anything else that were on people's mind, or I can't think of. Uh, talk about when the next meetings would be. Oh, right, the next meetings. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Not next week, right? Right, we were skipping next week because some people couldn't make it, and then we were skipping. We weren't going to meet again unless we thought it was really necessary until March, like March third. Does that? That sounds good to me. Okay. I, mean, I, I, I not, can't make it on March 3rd, but that's oh, okay. okay. That's okay. I don't have to make it. 
as long as everyone else can. Mm -hmm. So I guess one thing actually, right, is if um, if it goes to the council for approval and the new members go to council for approval on February 28th, then we could potentially have new people if they get into That's town cool. hall and they uh, sign the paperwork and everything, they get sworn in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and we're going to keep keeping just because we've changed the time, we're going to keep it yeah. at 530. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, um, and, then it would and, be the and then we would meet on the 17th as well, which I think should be okay. And maybe traveling that week, but uh, we'll see. Will we have a celebration that night of St. Patrick's Day? That's true. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm half Irish, so I recognize that. Oh, and Holly, too. My calendar says Holly, which is like the Indian, the Hindu holiday with all the colors. Mm -hmm. It starts at sunset. Okay. Oh. Um, so the 3rd and the 17th, then. 3rd and the 17th. Great. Okay. Do we move to adjourn? Yes. Yeah, I mean, did okay. anybody else have anything? Oh, okay. No, no need. We're done. Um, wait, I did just have a quick question for Guilford um, about the um, the GIS maps. Like, did it ever work out to connect with an intern from UMass or no? Or I haven't heard back from them. They had anybody. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Because it it'd be great to get those maps. Cheers. Thank you. All right. We can adjourn, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Bye. 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 All right. Take care. Bye. 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 -bye.